Hello, Mark, the guitar guy here. Yes, the guy from New Zealand. This is a crazy hour in the morning, but welcome to my live stream. We're just going to be having some fun today, playing some acoustic guitar. I really need your guys' questions, so please, please, please feel free to let us know. And just let me know right now who's out there watching. And when you do, just go, just go, hi, Mark, in the comments. Let me know what country you're listening to me from. Uh, you don't have to say anything special, just hi, Mark, I'm in this country or whatever you want to do, and um, I'm going to get back into it. So while you guys are doing that and writing me out some stuff, I'm going to start just cranking out a bit of stuff because I just feel like getting in the mood, right? I just need to get a bit of mood happening right now. So and for some reason, I'm playing this chord today, which is this really cool chord shape. So I'll explain what I'm doing in a minute. So let's get some thumbs up. It's going. There's already three people watching. This is amazing. All right. So and those guys that are watching it, not on the stream, I'm Mark, the guitar guy. I'm the guy that's here to help you play better, sound better, and feel better about your playing so that other people can enjoy it too. Because that's a good bonus. Let's go. Michael from Colorado. Hey, Michael. fun groove to start with actually kind of enjoying that I can explain what I was doing there too but I'm just going to have a look and see who's coming in here we've got Mark uh, Marco from Switzerland how are you going Marco and actually another thing you could let me know is what time it is where you are in the in the day I think for you guys sometimes are going to, it's going to be night time raccoon man 60 from Louisiana peace brother raccoon man is a good name very hairy though dude you need to maybe shave on groom a few times just looking at that photo of you so um what i was doing there i was just having a bit of fun with this cool chord shape that's a basically one of my favorite alternatives for the a chord so instead of playing an a chord i'm just doing a really cool little shape here first finger here is ronnie from ohio franklin ohio ronnie good to see you mate yeah let me know what time it is there too guys because it's uh it's 6 a.m. here in New Zealand. That's right, 6 a.m. It's the only time I get up this early, just for you guys. So uh, 10 a.m. and we're about to see you, Michael. Oh, you're in Colorado, 10 a.m. Wow, it's early for you guys too. It's not that bad. Sanch, my man, back after ages. I know, I'm back into it. Been starting to do regular videos. Actually have a video out this week. The B minor, I hate B minor video. Go check it. Let me know what you think of the uh, I hate B minor video, guys, too. That's our first produced video for a while, and we're just getting back in the zone. So we're pretty excited, though. M. Patty, hi, Mark. Movie Prop, Los Angeles, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Super Bowl Sunday. True, it is. It is. It's a massive thing right now for you guys. So, yeah. It's good to see you guys. It's, um, I'm really see me prepared so i need your help i really need your help to give me some questions today and i'm just opening the board like anything you can just have tell me ask me anything it's literally ama ask me anything about any aspect of guitar playing and i'll do my best to help you out um i've got an acoustic so it might be nice to be acoustic friendly but honestly any question guitar related that'll be awesome so um yeah, and so that little chord shape I was doing, I'll get back into that for those that are patiently waiting. It's an A chord, an A sus chord pretty much, but I'm just doubling up on the A. So it's an A, I call it a drone chord. This is what I like to call a drone chord. So what I'm doing here, I'm doing nothing on the top string. I've got a zero on the fifth string. 
then I've got the next string down is a two, and my little finger, my little pinky, is doing the four, and then underneath it's just two open strings. So I've got two of these um, B notes, isn't it? And so, so I have this B drone going on inside an A, and so it's full of A's and B's. So it's, I just love that sound. And I'm just doing a down backbeat sort of feel on the um, what strum is it down the funky strum. It's similar, it's kind of a ballad strum funky strum combo crossover there. And we talked about backbeat last week, how to get that. We're going to be doing some. Uh, you'll see some videos coming up about that in the next month or so. We've just recorded a batch of stuff recently as well, by the way. So a whole bunch of new stuff is going to be arriving on the channel, uh, properly edited, all that sort of stuff. Um, some sexy videos going in there, which is good for you guys. Um, yeah, some really cool ones, especially on the stuff you've been wanting to know about how to play riffs and chords at the same time. So that's one of the things I've focused on. I'm doing a whole series on that. So it's all planned out. So that'll be cool for you guys. Imran, how to jump from chord to chord. Uh, to solo like you do, chord to chord to solo and solo like I do. So um, why don't we use this example that I just did? So to finish up this concept, I've got this A, and so I'm just doing this stop thing where I sort of stop with my left hand, sort of stop with my right hand together to give this backbeat, giving it that kind of feel. So, and then what I can do with that chord shape, I can slide it up into some different positions and it in like two frets up. It's this really interesting, it's just the same shape. And I can go two more frets. That one's a little harder on the ears, but it sounds kind of cool. Like if I do this sort of, this little slide, hitting the downstroke and slide it. Make up. I'm just literally making this stuff up. It's not a, like a famous song. And then I know it resolves to an E chord, which is my E drone chord. I just lift my first finger up one boing, one for, uh, string. And I cover now, these two strings are being covered by my first finger. That looks like it might be tricky, and I'll show you another angle for that. So it's kind of a slight angle, slight angle. And you have a sort of space underneath. I'm not playing, I'm not barring it. It's not flat. It's just lifted slightly. But I'm aiming that finger between two strings. Just realized my monitor's on. I'm going to turn those off so we don't get any feedback. That might sound a little bit better to you, hopefully. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing there with the E. Getting an E drone chord going. One of my favorite chords is the E drone chord. So the notes for that one, we've got zero, okay, two, two which is just like basically part of the E, these two notes here. And my little finger though, instead of having to do this note here on the first string on the, uh, sorry, on the third string, first fret, my little finger's playing the fourth fret, where I, it hasn't moved from the A shape, it's there. I also call these the Dave Matthews chords, if you've ever done the song uh, Crash. This is basically where I learnt those chords. It's not that, he's not the only one that does it, but it's one of the ones I do. So. so anyway, A and E, pretty much. So that's, I just resolve back to an E. And I've got that E here, and I've also got an E here, which is another sort of type of drone. We've got 079900. Quite fun chords, right? And then from there, I can change little notes, like my little finger note. I can move it, take it from a, what it was a nine before, and make it an eight. And that gives it that major seven kind of sound. But yet still, I've still got these bottom two strings ringing the whole time. So what I was doing there, I was adding the little finger on there. But the, the percussive feel, though, that I'm doing with the strumming part is really what's making this whole thing really work, you know? Like... I did in there, so you're asking about the soloing before, right? I've got this, um, I just know when I'm in this key of E, E major, right? 
I just mm -hmm. naturally my hand knows where the notes are going to be that I'm hearing when I'm hearing a little fill at the end of the bar. So one, two, three, four, or something like that. Like all I did there was a hammer on from the first finger was already in position. I did a hammer on to four, and the next one straight underneath it, just like that. Pretty easy. Just realised I talk. Whenever I go live or, or I'm recording, my, my whole voice lifts and a high goes to a higher register, and it's six a.m. in New Zealand, and and then it breaks, and by the end of it, I'm talking like um, I've had a pack of cigarettes. So this is my natural voice down here. This is really where I normally hang out, but it's probably a bit muffly, maybe a bit dead sounding down here. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a little riff there. There's two hammer ons at the back end of a bar, that was where you do it. So one, two, three, ba -da -da -da. that's where the riff would belong, the back end of the bar. So you one, two, three, Oops. two, three. That second riff I did there, I'm, I'm just hitting the note there on the fourth fret because it's in the shape, it's within the shape. I don't want to go too far away. And then my third finger plays the fourth fret on the fourth string and I play that slide and then I might slide it back down slide it back down depending on how skillful I'm feeling slide up and then slide down is probably the easier way to do it so four six uh, four two all on the fourth string so I'm going like a, that sort of thing or I might do a pull off which is probably more likely because I'm, I'm a bit lazy I don't want to have to go all the way down here and then come back and play my chord I want to go I'll probably just pull that off to be honest and those riffs I've played at some point, I've probably practiced them. I've probably gone and or something like that. And uh, at some stage in the last 30 years of playing guitar, which is, you know, it builds up. These things build up in your subconscious. You kind of can just grab them like, oh, I want to do that riff and that riff. I'm not thinking play that riff on that fret. It's just kind of I hear it and boom. My my yank, you Rathor. I'm so sorry if I get that wrong. My yank is such a cool name. Hi Mark, been watching you on and off for eleven ish years now. Wow, great content, brother. Keep it up, dude. You literally is from the start. That was right from the very start. I looked at some of those videos the other day. Age, time is a cruel, cruel mistress. BS. I've played acoustic a couple of years, but I struggle with following tabs using all my fingers in an efficient way a lot of the time. So um, so you don't struggle with tabs or you struggle, oh, you, but I struggle with following tabs, using all my fingers in an efficient way a lot of the time. If you've got good ideas to improve on that issue. So following tabs. So if it's a tab idea you're needing, following tabs, the best way not, is not to follow tabs literally while you're playing, okay? you when you when the, the idea is to get the bar and, and let me know, BS. <laughs> what if, I'm sorry about if that's obviously not your real name. Or BS. Maybe it is. Maybe your parents were just like, I can't think of anything. Just let's just pick two letters from the alphabet, and one chose your mum chose B, your dad chose S. Boom, BS. It's like yeah, boss name. Just they couldn't spell boss. Maybe that was it. Um, you want to do uh, tabs. You don't want to be focused on the the reading of the tabs. You want to get the tabs off. The page or the screen into your fingers and you're playing and then once you have them in your playing you then can relax and get the, the make the music happen so you're memorizing maybe let's say a bar of music let's say it was like um let's say this was the the tab right i'm just going to make uh, some stuff up that's the first bar right the first bar does that and so you'd be going through and going zero on that string seven on oh what string is that that's the third string it's like this sort of thing really literally slowly going through this and getting the notes down so you've literally go but one by one until you've got about a bar or if it's a bar with a bunch of crazy notes and it's a big sort of uh, like something like that and you go wow it's a big bunch of notes in the bar like what like one two three four i played it wrong differently the next time but you get the idea of it that's a lot so you break it down into little chunks and you chew on that little first five, uh, three or four notes, get it sounding okay, add the next bit, get it sounding okay. And then once you've got the tab off the page, meaning the first bar of whatever that is, make sure the timing 
is is done is done well the first time. Now I wouldn't worry about which fingers you're using in an efficient way. I, I mean, if you're using them in an efficient way and you're succeeding with that, that's awesome. Keep doing that. Don't change that. Um, but it's not the main focus. The main focus is music, right? We want to make it sound nice. Sometimes you've got to use an inefficient way or a thing, maybe not a technically perfect way to do something so you can actually play the damn thing. So um, not everyone's fingers are the same. So get it off the page one bar at a time. Digest that one bar and get the sound right. So like that. Let's, let's do a bit more interesting rhythm. Let's do this. Uh, ah. ah, that's better. So my timing is one, two, three. I can't quite count and do that at the same time. Let's say it's four beats in the bar. <laughs> so that's the timing. But when you get the tab, you'd go. You might be. You might even be like with one finger trying to figure out what it is, and then you go, "Oh, it's just if I do this." This is the thing you've got to think: what shape would fit that? And then put the shape on and try and make an efficient pattern. So you're not going with but 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 little short notes. You might realise it rings together, and then get the timing with that little bit at the end. Like the, the, uh, there's a gap, then there's the last note, and you've got to find the right place. Program it though. Program it. Repeat. 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 One bar really, really well, okay? Just one bar really, really well. Once you've got that, then you can play it. Once once you've got it programmed, you'll know because you can do other stuff. You can look around. You can think about lunch. And then the next thing is you do the next bar. Simple as that. So hopefully that helps you with that concept. And as far as efficient fingers, man, if you've got efficient fingers, that's great. Um, that's not the main aim, though. The main aim is to make music. So keep that in mind. Hope that helped. Let me know if that worked. Michael Olson liked the B minor video. Nice. Liking how you hit the chord starting with the middle finger first. Did you try it? Did you give that a try? Hitting the chord faster and cleaner. It's a really cool concept, right? Some people don't think about things like this, but this is what I've had to think about as a teacher. Like, how do I get this? You're playing a great B minor, but it's not working in time and realizing that that second finger, building a chord around a new finger is a really cool way of doing things. Don't be afraid to do that too, guys. If you learn a chord a certain way, like a lot of people ask me this about G, because I play G generally like this, right? What I call a modern G. And some people learn G uh, this way, which is not wrong. It's not that it's wrong. I don't have a problem with people learning this way. I'll show the fingers a bit better there. Just a standard, like old school, when I first learned G, that was how I did it. And there's this great big split going on. Another way people learn it is with the back three fingers, right? I'm just changing the fingers, second, third, and fourth. My first finger's doing nothing. And some people learn it just one finger here. And so there's lots of varieties of ways of doing things. None of them are right or wrong. There's just preference. And some songs suit certain styles um, of doing, like instead of this way, this way's a nice way. Like Cat Stevens, right? You've got that really nice, oh, nice, Michael, you're trying that idea out. BS, hopefully, oh, cheers, BS, that's awesome. Hopefully that worked for you. But um, so like an example would be like Cat Stevens. You've got that um, father and son song. You can't do that. The second chord shape which is a famous chord shape we use in a lot of folk stuff, and eagles and all that sort of stuff. I especially use it for the intro. For, where you've got to keep these outside notes strong and then play a different shape. You like like an A minor seven shape inside it. So um, that's uh, that's a great song, by the way, Father and Son. It's not time to make a change. Just relax, take it slowly. You're still young, that's your fault. There's so much you have to go through. I love that song. Aaron Short Music, good name as well. Like a full on proper business sounding name, Aaron. I like it. Hi, Mark, love the Cole Clark. Thank you very much. Which gauge strings do I use? <laughs> um, pretty sure it's 12s to 56s. I'm 50. It's maybe or 11s to. I can tell my my buddy who gives me my gets me my strings is going like, dude, it's not even that. Give me two seconds. I've got a drawer with strings in it right here, just like you guys, just like you have, right? Hey. Eh? And I'm wrong. I'm so wrong as I looked at it. Well, this packet is a 10 to 46, but it's light. Little string packet that I use right here. I, 
I think I've got a variety. These are the light ones that I put on for, for gigs. And then this one here happens to be, I think, maybe 11s to 52s or something. Really not a good technical dude. I, mean, I just make sure they're nice, they're, they're thick enough that I don't feel too sloppy inside my um, playing when I'm playing so they don't move around too much and that they've got a little bit of pushback. But I don't want them so heavy that it pulls the neck right out of line and I end up having to push the guitar, the neck down, uh, the strings down too hard to try and get a decent sound. So, uh, so yeah, but like Cole Clark, this is a, these are delicious. This is the big one. This is the fat lady. It's called fat ladies is the, the large dreadnought. And I sometimes use my wife's guitar, which is, um, the angel. So the angel is, um, I just prefer the angel as far as having more fun on it because it's just a little bit easier to play. It feels a bit nicer and it wants to play more lead. It's what I find, whereas this one I just loves being strummed. Just like I, I bought this guitar as soon as I heard that chord. I just played G, picked it up, and went. I was like, oh. So, um, and I've got it plugged in today, so it's going to be hopefully a, a better sound for everything. But um, yeah, it's nice. Eh? It's got that kind of Maiden Australian wood sound. Akshay, Akshay Surana. Hopefully I get that right. You should take a live workshop, like a five-day course. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Anyone else out there would like to be part of a five-day workshop? That would be a real cool idea. And we're looking at doing things like this. We're looking at – we want to know how we can help you and, and with the rest of our week so it's not just on a live stream. Like what's the best way you can um, – You let us know. What's the best uh, thing you'd like to hear from me that would help you like would you be like to be part of a team like part of a group by the way so patreon we i have a patreon and um it's only a baby at this stage but we're starting to put some uh, cool stuff in there adding extra videos bonus videos and things like that from this from the uh guitar lessons so i'll be doing extra stuff so let's say we learned two riffs in a in a video and you might learn two more riffs in the other video, like bonus riffs kind of thing, or stuff with backing tracks. Maybe I'll show you how I do my guitar playing and that sort of thing. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff there, including a meetup. So we're going to be doing a meetup once a month. That's the aim is to do once a month. You'll get an invite because you're a Patreon member, and then we'll just do a hangout with, with like a select group of us, whether it's probably no more than 10 people but it's just so you guys can all see who else is out there getting guitar lessons and ask questions amongst each other but with me and i'll host it and we can talk about any aspect of guitar that you want to talk about or could be just about life in general just a hang you know who needs to hang out me lots of people stuck over here in new zealand by myself me and my wife it's desperate so um yeah what else we got out there guys and a Cole Clark, it is a good brand. By the way, Cole Clark, if you want to sponsor me and send me a brand new guitar, more than welcome to do that. I'll I'll do it if you twist my arm. Someone asked the other day if this was a branded a mug, but I, maybe I should get some merch. It's actually just a cup that says Mark Limited Edition that was at a shop because they just know Mark is a big deal, that name. Can you please tell the name of the chords you just played? Oh man, I don't even know what I just played. Um, I have no idea what I just played there, guys. I'd have to watch it back. <laughs> the names are probably E, A, B, C sharp minor, because that's the vibe I'm in right now. So, uh, Abhishek Samuel, last time I tried to say your name, let me know if I got like out of 10. Let me know how I go with your names, guys. If I, like out of 10, all right? So, Abhishek, Abhishek, Samuel, Samuel, hopefully I've got that bit good, but hey bro, tuning in the late, tuning in the late Sam here, your, your channel promoter, tuning in the late Sam here, your channel promoter, let me know what that, I don't quite know what that means, but that sounds good, hey bro, tuning in the late Sam here, I'm thinking tuning, or you're tuning in, that could be some abbreviated stuff that I'm just not cool enough to know what that means. <laughs> But let me know any questions about guitar playing and I'm do my best. Mr. Han 88 Farin. Hi, Mark. I'm a complete beginner. Just started a couple of months ago. Is it possible to play completely without using a pick? I'm more comfortable using my fingers. So good question. And I get this all the time because I'm a guy that plays with a pick, right? 
Um, the reason you can't, you don't like playing with a pick, it's really quite simple. You just have to spend a little bit of time. But go to my um, how to use how to use a guitar pick. Excuse me, the um, the video I've done on this, and I explain how. And I'll give you a very quick tip. I'll give you a two second demo of what I'm talking about. Most people hold it like they like they're writing, like with a with a pen, right? And we hold it in a way that that's how we would put it in our fingers and so when we do that as a guitar player we do that and we go and play we end up with this kind of weird hand that does this kind of stuff and I, now that's just terrible and not much fun and not much accuracy all that sort of stuff so as a beginner what you need to do and everyone needs to do this guys here's my pick i'm just holding up my thumb it goes on right through and behind the pick Okay, so we're not holding the tip. We're not holding it with the thumb right at the edge. You can see that. I'm trying to find the camera here. That thumb has to go right. My thumb at the back here has to go. See, it's not quite past the pick. You can see the pick still. It needs to push past. It's a better angle. It needs to push past the pick. Now you can hopefully see that. Hopefully camera focuses on that. Past the pick, and you can see at the back here, it sticks a little bit beyond it. And so literally 45 degree angle as well. It's not like this. It's it's not an extension of our nails like our other side is. We want it to be going down our thumb like that. Oops, see that. <laughs> and so about in the middle, a thumb wants to be about in the middle of the pick and then hold it, use the side of the finger. See my index finger, you can see the nail, the whole nail. That's because I'm using the side of my finger to push it against, to hold it just gently against my thumb. And then once you've got that position, you'll be able to strum better because your hand will be nice and low. See how low my hand is now. Now, the other way I was holding it, I was like this. See this big, great big distance from the guitar? Just absolutely horrible to use. And I go to pick strings and I'm getting the wrong string. Thumb, ac thumb across, finger pointing down and sort of curling back a little bit. Basically, I've got a little A-OK -okay, like, yeah, everything is good. That's pretty much how I'm doing that. And then when I play guitar, if I'm wanting to pick an individual string, my little finger just touches the guitar as an anchor point. So there's a bunch of stuff online that I've done with, about holding a pick. And it's great that you're a beginner and you're getting into it. It's absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, welcome to the journey. It's an exciting journey. Just work on those fundamentals. And uh, the strumming side, really important. Holding a pick, really important. You can play without a pick, 100%. But there, are, there is actually another option and that is black mountain picks so black mountain they make these amazing picks here we're just going to be hopefully working out a bit of an endorsement deal with these guys as well because i really believe in them i've been using them all week and um it's a it's got a little spring-loaded attachment and it holds it against your thumb in the perfect spot this is a, this is the pick i like playing with and it's a normal pick and it's and it, so you can use it for finger style as a normal pick and so it holds it in this perfect spot look at that literally holds it against it so you don't have to worry about what this finger is doing just as a bit of a guide so bike style er bike style er hey mark i'm seeing you after four years i learned to finger pick from your videos oh, love that love that so you'll have great finger picking technique your thumb will be fully forward like that that's what you want to have when you're doing finger style and by the way, so back to the guy with the um, talking about the um, yeah, keep that question there. That'll be great. The um, back to the finger style thing. Finger style is good too. And playing with the thumb and all that sort of stuff, that's easy to do. You might as well develop the skill of having this. It's like an asset. It lifts your volume, gives you a whole bunch of crisp clearness. I just really hope you get don't no one gets scared off by using a pick. It's just that you don't know how to hold it. And I understand it's horrible when you don't know how to hold it. But when you do, it's like oh life-changing this is so much easier still takes a little bit of getting used to um so anyway yeah i encourage you to do that and finger style yeah we need to do that too ronnie tolby i have a seagull seagull s6 classic i really like the sound of it what is your opinion on sort of seagull mm -hmm. guitars yeah i've got a lot of friends i think a lot of friends i teach uh when i say friends i teach online i'm doing my skype lessons right so um every week i'm catching up with people from all around the world via 
via my little camera right here, literally like this, just one-on-one, -on -one, you and me doing lessons. A couple of them in England have got seagull guitars, and they are delicious. They are really beautiful guitars. Don't see them a lot here for sale. I don't know if there's a rep in New Zealand that does those, or if there is, um, it's not local where I am, and I'm in the middle of nowhere, so that's probably why. So, yeah, it's one of those things. Seagull, I see if, I've seen a few, and I think they've been English friends that have arrived in New Zealand and they've got a seagull guitar. So yeah, Matt Davies, nice pick. Your nice pick, nice pick. Got one this week. Oh, nice. Matt Davies, speaking of Skype lessons, Matt Davies is my longest serving uh, Skype lesson guy. He's been, Matt is amazing. He's been with me since the start of this whole Skype lesson stuff where we've been doing online lessons. So, and he's talking about the Black Mountain pick. He's just got one. I talked about it last week. That's that's quick. So it arrives pretty quick. Let me know how you're getting on with that, Matt, because we'll be catching up in a few days' time anyway. But um, that's cool. We'll do some work on it. That'll be fun. So can you do uh, tips, or, tips for ear training for beginners? Good call. Good call. So one of the good things we can do with ear training is once you know some chords, just some basic chords and that kind of thing, is to like basic C, D, G, E minor, that sort of stuff is to do a little test like I just did before, is try to listen to a song and, and try to try to imagine what chord it feels like. So it sounds bizarre because you're actually you're actually trying to, it's a feeling attached to a chord. It sounds kind of va vague, but it really is that. It's like, especially when you hear this chord, just has a sound about it. The D chord is one of those ones you can hear. Like, let's say I'll give you a quick test because we did this the other day. This was quite fun. So I'm going to play two chords. I'm going to show you what the chords are. Then I'm going to hide the guitar in so you won't see what it is. And I want, you, I want you to tell me in the chat what you think it is. Okay, so let's do this. So we're going to do D. We're going to make them really obvious. Okay, the first two, an E minor. And so what this is, SB, is the training. Ear training is basically having to, having to imagine what the note is or having to um, guess what whereabouts that note's being played on the guitar and trying to figure out that note. So we'll do a chord version and a, and a, and a note version. So I do a little bit of this with my students. So we've got a D and an E minor, okay? So say in the comments what you think it is. I'm going to hide the guitar. I'm going to play the first. Um, I'm going to play a random chord first in the middle of it, and then I'm going to ask you to do it. So I'm going to mess up with it now so you won't even – I'm going to put the guitar head out, out, of, out of shot, right? So I'm just going to play some – chords that aren't part of the, those chords. Okay, now this chord. This chord is what? It's one of those two. And the chords were D and E minor. So put it in the chat. What do you think it is? And then I'm going to muck around again. Last chord, what is it? Oh. D minor. The first chord was an E minor. Abhishek, you got it. You might have typed, and it was a minor. Akshay, you got it. That's the first thing you got to figure out. Is it minor or major? So that's actually a good point. Is, is it a sad sound? Okay, I'll put it off the screen. That's my E minor. E minor's got a sad sound, like a major happy sound so even that is a very good beginning point trying to s figure out is it major or minor and then we're trying to figure out where it is so we, what it is we figured it out right it's a major or a minor because generally chords are going to be one or the other there's i know there's thousands of chords out there guys but generally it's going to fall in the major happy sound or the sad sounding category so here's off the screen again let's guess what this chord is is it major or minor first major or minor so this is good ear training and then that chord i just noticed it's one of those ones i get to know really well so if i play uh yeah, what chord is that by the way guys let me know i just gave you it there right there d it's a d chord well done well done Overshek. getting good at this stuff so what and the other thing is like i'm going to do one more because i've got a good idea for this i'm going to play four chords in a song okay and I want you to let me know of the four chords, which one is the D major, okay? Here's the D major. Remember that sound, okay? I'm gonna hide the guitar, I'm gonna hide it down here. And then let's have a go. Like... So 
So which chord was it? First one, second one, third chord, or the fourth chord? I'll do it again. Which chord is it? Here's the first chord. One, two, three. And the winner is Titus, you've got it. Akshay, you've got it. Andrew, close. It's the third chord. So we did it again. Here's an A. C. D. So the third chord, see that? See, even that is really good training for you to do. I'm trying to figure out what that is. So pretty cool. For some reason, the truck's just turned up outside my house. But uh, it's probably to get rid of all the crap I'm talking. So, um, yeah, any other questions, guys, please just feel free. But that's kind of cool. The air training thing's a bit fun. And I like making it into a bit of a game. So notes is another way of doing that and, and trying to find the chord on the bass note. So I spent a lot of the time because we didn't have internet when I was playing. I was learning to play in like 1987, 86, 87. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'd listen to a song. And I remember trying to work out Better Be Home Soon by Crowded House. That Somewhere deep inside. That's the intro. Um, and so I'd be trying to figure out, I could I figured out C being in tune helps because then you can find the chord easy. And I basically figured that out that I and I didn't like C because it hurt and it was a big stretch. Um, and then A minor, and I think I got the E minor, and I probably just did a basic G, but then I didn't know what happened after that because it went no I'm right. And it went to this chord. I didn't I felt when I heard that note I thought it was a totally new chord shape like I thought it was or something like that you know something totally not that I would have played that but you my ear was not quite clever enough to know that it was just a C that it added in a slightly different note which made it a C7 and so I didn't know what a C7 was when I learned the chord but this is ear training so these days you get in tabs right you go on ultimate guitar boom you've got everything you need to get thousands of versions of the songs so you're thinking wise you don't need to get a good ear so it's one of the things that isn't getting developed in people's playing these days because we don't have to worry about it it's like not getting you're not good at maths because you've got a calculator why would you be good at maths calculator does it all so it's a little bit like that but when you're a guitarist it's nice to actually have good ears to be able to do all this sort of stuff so um abhishek make some videos of cool embellishments <clears throat> yeah i'm gonna i'm i'm doing that a little bit with kind of riffs and stuff too so I will be doing that because I'm going to be doing a series on my favorite chords. Like I just did at the beginning, I gave you that, that A chord, right? Which is this O, two, like zero or nothing, zero, two, four, zero, zero. Because you can move that shape. I love all that sort of stuff. Or even doing some stuff like like we're same same two strings doing the a chord doing some things where you're playing some random shapes like that where i've got it's uh six and seven six on the third string seven on the fourth string and like sliding those shapes around that kind of stuff i just love those sort of chords those droney kind of chords and then moving while I'm playing the chords. So if I get a bar of A, instead of going one, two, three, four, which I like, which is fine, but sometimes if I've got a chance, just lifting fingers off, we might go like this, like I did before. So those kind of things, I'll be doing some videos on what I'm doing for that. And I call it awesomeizing, but it's just basically embellishments, like you said. So, uh, so yeah, keep the questions coming on. Um, Sebastian, I'm new to guitar and I play by ear. Great. That's really good. What should I practice to get better? I've exhausted backing tracks. So if you're playing backing tracks, do you mean you're playing soloing by ear? So, um, and if you play by ear, which is great, uh, depends what you mean by that. Like, are you just, some people will say I play by, I remember one dude, he's uh, got a, quite an arrogant guitar player 
that I know locally who uh, who's just like a tries to portray himself as a bit of a hippie um, kind of ethereal kind of like, dude, I just like to feel what I play, man. I don't stick to regular scales, man. Um, that kind of dude, you can imagine. Very charming, charismatic guy. But at the same time, kind of writing off the fact that he, he doesn't know anything about guitar. So um, just don't be that guy because honestly, he played the same four notes the whole day. Seriously. And he's he played them really well. But he just got really good at the same four notes. And I was bored. I was like, hey, hey, four notes. What else you got? So um, I didn't say that. Of course, I'm a lovely person. Uh, well, at least externally. Internally, I was. Arr! So Sebastian, new to guitar, play by ear. What should, I, what should I practice to get better? Well, I guess you should play whatever you love. So when you love something and you hear it and you go, I really love the way that this guitar player is doing the soloing. Or I love this tone. Or I really love this girl's uh, this girl's finger style is fantastic, and the way she plays her chord shapes really interesting to me. I want to learn that. Literally, just go down that path, because because what, whenever you really like something, there's an aspect of that playing, not necessarily all of it, but there's an aspect of it that you're going to really love. The if you take that to its full conclusion, it can go wrong, <laughs> but you are uh, you just want to grab pieces of everybody's playing what i mean by going wrong like someone i know i know someone that's into john mayer um he, i don't know him very well but he literally plays like john mayer and he doesn't it's like there's another john mayer sounding guy out there now i love john mayer but we've already got one and i'd rather hear what he has to say as a, as a human being not not john mayer's what he thinks john mayer would say if that makes sense it's like if you meet me and I decide I like someone else better and I want to be like them and I answer questions, what I what they would say as opposed to what I say when they're asking me, it doesn't make sense to me. So, um, yeah, you can get too far down that track. So, um, But if you're playing backing tracks, I imagine you're playing along with backing tracks and soloing. Or if, you, if, you, if that's all you're doing, use the backing tracks to learn the chords as well. So make sure you're not just a soloist. Make sure you're both a guitarist who plays chords and solos because then you're more fun to hang out with because if i come to your place and you're like let's jam and i get stuck playing chords all day to try and make you sound awesome because you can't play chords and so that's frustrating or the other way around if you're just playing chords and i'm soloing i get a bit bored of soloing i want to play some guitar as well and do you know what i mean so it's nice to have a bit of both and and both are easy three series of soloing would be awesome yeah good idea good idea i'm not known as the soloing guy because i'm kind of like the guy with acoustic guitar doing doing rhythmic stuff but actually soloing is the stuff i love doing and um i've actually developed some cool stuff and got some good good style with soloing but um soloing i, I tend to start stay in the shallow end when i'm teaching it right so when i'm when i'm teaching like pentatonic scale one scale shape how to get around it because most of the guys I come across um, guys and girls most of the guys I come across don't actually play enough soloing they, there's a there's a mental barrier going on like I don't I'm not a soloist I can't play guitar solos that's like that's like amazing guitarists do solos not me um, but yeah you need to anyone can solo you, once you've got those I told you about the guy with four notes right um, you got four notes man he just solos all day he literally that's he doesn't sing he doesn't he does live gigs he doesn't sing he just gets up there plays a backing track or a loop and solos and he does he does great you know the average person just thinks he's amazing and um i know i know he's missing some stuff he's very good at what he does but it's like uh play play the whole scale shape for a for a change maybe i don't know <laughs> it's not about scale shapes but, but yes that soloing concept's great will duke I am depressed because I broke my strumming wrist. Are there any fret hand exercise lessons you can recommend? Oh man, dude, that sucks. So um, left hand exercises. Well, one I can recommend if you if you're working. Oh, it's two. If you're working on chords, um, so chord shapes, I would actually start introducing new chord shapes with your left hand using the pressing technique because you literally don't use the right hand for the pressing technique. So. Um, you, there's, I think there's a video called, one of mine called How to Change Chords Quickly or something like that. And this is the technique I use for it. So, man, I'm so so uh, gutted for you and your wrist. But uh, I know what it's like. I actually 
involved in an altercation when I was a bit younger and um, my, which hand was it? My right hand, I actually um, I broke my knuckle. You can, if I can see, if you can see my other knuckle, I can't, don't know if you can see that, but this knuckle here, it's flat. It's kind of broken and smashed away. So, um, and it's on my right hand. My left hand's got a lovely little knuckle here. Absolutely beautiful. But uh, this guy over here, gone. So anyway, um, that was in a cast for a long time. So quite depressing. But left hand, I would just be doing like that video I just released on the B minor chord. Um, I hate B minor. Has got the same example. I'm using the pressing technique. I was doing like a D chord and then I'm going to a B minor and I'm using that second finger to pivot and and angle the chord. And so if I had no right hand going on, I'd just be going like getting some good at some maybe brand new chord shapes. Don't pick too many at once though. If you're going to do chord shapes, just pick say, let's say you have four brand new chords that you've never done before. I would bring in those four chords. An example I used to do, there was a song, it was a jazz song that had these chord shapes like a G13 and whatever that is. And these kind of, these kind of, right. kind of thing going on i'm not a jazz guy but you can probably tell from the way i played that but um there was that 13th chord which i really struggled with and so i just went over and over going left hand press and then the next chord press and then back to the first chord again, press, next chord, press. And I just get quicker and quicker at landing those fingers. That's how you learn a shape really well, pressing technique. It's really good. And you can add the strum in later on. So start with four chords and get four brand new chords. That's my challenge to you. Sebastian, I just solo. I can pretty much play anything I, I hear, but I'm not good at chords yet. Okay, cool. So, um, but that's cool. So that means your ear is really good already, Sebastian, if you're playing by ear. So you don't need to work too much more on that. Um, but don't get too, you, you'll get bored by your playing, which is probably one of the things you're following, you're finding, Sebastian. And guys out there, you might understand what I mean. Give us a thumbs up if you know what I mean when it comes to, um, now I've just noticed my this finger doesn't quite close fully. That's because of that same problem that I had with the altercation. But um, yeah, just making sure that you uh, are always with the, um, what am I talking about here? With the guitar solos, I just think, getting distracted by the screen. Um, playing by ear, playing solos and that sort of stuff. If you're going to be doing a lot of playing of just soloing, you're, it's, you're unbalanced. So make sure you work on those um, chords and learning songs so that you can be a fun guy to hang out with as a guitar player and you, you're missing out on some really nice stuff. And you can always bring in those soloing ideas as well. But what I like is that you're doing soloing. So because everybody else is not doing soloing pretty much. Most people are learning chords, how to strum, and are so scared of soloing for some reason, but you don't have that fear. So I would work on some of those things, areas which they're not, it's not that they're not strengths, because they might be, they probably are strengths, it's just that you're not excited by them. So um, find something that does excite you and go and learn that, I would say, so that you can pretty much get that whole thing done. So, um, but if you hit sick of playing, but I think it, one of the things you could do a lesson, that would be a real smart move, Sebastian. Actually, it is a real smart move. And then I can push you in an area maybe that you're uncomfortable for soloing, but you really enjoy. Like um, a lot of people play like... I'm always an A minus. Uh, they the pentatonic scale and they might know a few other scales or that sort of thing. But... I'm, I'm trying to push people out of that comfort zone. So I might be okay. You, you can't play the third string. That's I, putting in limitations on your playing is a great way of getting better at things. Um, so you might be playing the pentatonic scale all the time, but yet by taking away the third string gives you less options. <laughs> See how different that sounds because that jump of a note is would normally be the note, right? doesn't have to be the third string can be any strings so you give yourself a limitation to, so that you can't play that no it might be the limitation is i can only play the third string and the first string but those two strings see but i can't do it so 
pushes pushes you into a place like I did then. I was like, oh, I'm lost here. Pushes you into a place that you that you're a bit scared. Sorry, Nikita, you throw up a, a a question for me there, and I just totally ignored you. Oh, Will Duke, dude, super sticker. D thank you so much for that. I completely forget that's an option. I'm just always just so in the live stream. That that's really cool, Will. I really appreciate that, mate. You must have done that with your good hand. Raven's Mead. Hi, Mark. Greetings from Scotland. Any thoughts on Toke guitars? Toke guitars are great. Very, very cool. I've actually played a few, usually really nice sounding. You don't see a lot of them uh, where I am, at least. But no, honestly, any I'm not a guitar snob. If you look behind me, none of those guitars would be over $500 US. Um, I think the closest one would be this one here, which is a court, which is not a flash, like an over the top brand court, make a lot of guitars for Ibanez and that sort of thing. I think they're based in Indonesia. Um, but the guitar is amazing and it's just cheap. The rest of them, are then the, the Strat and the Tele, that's a, that's a Squire. The Tele is a Jansen, which is like a, so they're not expensive brand. This is the most expensive. This thing here is probably on the, in the region of close to two thousand US dollars, but I used I needed a guitar that's got a microphone and all sorts of stuff in it for the gigs that I do. So, so Tokai guitars, nothing wrong with them. If you just have them, I would recommend all of you out there, by the way, to go get your guitar set up, get it set up, take it to a professional guitar person that can set it up for you, whether that's in your local store or an actual luthier, so that you're. Um, oh, dude, another super sticker. Mr. Han, 88, thank you so much. Really, really cool. Really cool. It's really nice of you. So, um, yeah, get it, get your guitar set up. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You can Any guitar can be set up well. If the neck action's too high, that can be fixed. There's a little truss rod that goes through the guitar. You can get that adjusted. Personally, I like a really low action. I don't want to push down hard because I'm, I'm playing a lot. I don't want to work too hard at that. Um, and you don't need high action. There's no point in high action other than you don't get string buzz a little bit maybe, but you might get string buzz if you don't have enough energy to push that note down. So my strings are really low. Like people play my guitar and they're like, I'm, my, this is incredibly easy to play. The bar chords are simple. I just have to think of the note and it's like, you know, you can see it. notes are really, really flat. I don't have to push down too hard. So good sound. Doesn't really matter with your Tokai. I would just be like, get it set up and you'll fall in love with your guitar. Mr. Han, 88 Farum, can you share a little bit of your musical journey? Like how long did it take for you to get the hang of things, i.e. feeling one with the guitar? And can you also share a personal guitar routine and training? So these are good questions. So the musical journey. So uh, strap yourselves in. So my, my dad played guitar. He played like a nylon string guitar that he taught himself to play. He didn't know the names of chords. They were cowboy chords, basically. So he learned a little bit of folk and country music and he was, he would, he played like D then he played G was like that. That was his G and he just played the bottom three strings, four strings. And then he knew A, he didn't know A, a he played A7 because he did that shape there. But that's his version of an A. He knew a C and I don't know if he even knew an F, didn't know an F, didn't know all those, didn't know what the names of them were. And he just had a great ear. So I used to listen to him play and was just mesmerized when I was a child, just thinking like, this is some sort of sorcery. Wow, is he making this beautiful sound? Um, and one day the guitar was lying on the ground and I just strummed it as a, as a baby, as a, like a probably like five or six year old kid, pretty much. Just sat next to it with my ear against it, lying on the floor. Because, you know, when you're a kid, you're just lying on the floor all the time. And I just strummed down the back here. I was just doing this. And I did that for so long that I had a huge blister on my finger, uh, my thumb, I should say, from doing that. And I just loved the way it made me feel. It just felt incredible. So that was a sign. You might know what the same sort of thing, guys, if you have that feeling, that connection to guitar. And then as I got older, I realized I loved guitar, the sound of guitar. Like um, there was a song, Wipeout, which was way before then. Like it's, that was 20 years earlier than I was born. But uh, 15 years maybe, but um, sounded amazing, and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And then uh, my dad, I convinced my father to play me to teach me some chords at about 12. Um, he taught me the four chords that he knew, 
and he don't I, I was a sports guy i was a rugby player in the new zealand that's like a football or, or some sort of american football maybe but it's like a rough and tough kind of game i loved and i was a cross-country runner and i played tennis and i was a, a cricket player and all all music all sport things i was just like always outside playing uh rough and tumble stuff but then guitar had something else that i'd never felt before and i became obsessed when a, a you know about 12 13 i just became obsessed when i started hearing dire straits and i heard um van halen for the first time and i heard man it was the 80s so you were hearing bon jovi and all that sort of stuff and it just sounded like so amazing to me so that's how i started and then getting the hang of things man it took a long time i didn't i didn't feel like i was natural in, in any way when i started i was like i was musically natural but everything kind of hurts when you play right when you're learning it's like ouch that can't be right. Oh, I must be doing this wrong because this is ridiculously not much fun, you know, like the, but the sound was enough to keep me going. And I got into things like trying to learn the shadows. This is all by ear, you know, so I'd be like. And all that sort of stuff. And then when I discovered soloing, like um, I guess was around maybe 14, I was shown a pentatonic set. Which I kind of figured out myself by ear, but I didn't realize the whole shape. So once I learned that shape, I just started putting it on. I noticed I could do it to everything and play along with things. So in the school band, I joined the school band. We learned like, I won't say the name. It was this song. You can let me know what that song is. And the other thing was, uh, the other song was. Ah. that kind of stuff as well so so yeah quite cool that was the an rem song and so i ended up playing in the school band which just blew my mind i was so shy guys i was so shy even though i played i played sport i was the shyest guy in the team i was the dude that got bullied in the team even though i was pretty good at sport i'd still get i get chased on practice guitar practice with stuff thrown at me sometimes uh, really weird how they pick on the little and i was tiny really small really small guy um shorter than i was shorter than the girls in the in the class when i was growing up and so i was that little dude but determined determined but i'm normal height nowadays but uh but yeah so there's lots more to it but i won't bore you because we've only got so much time left but thank you for that question m patty i'm um, talking about uh, gu the guitar routine and stuff just let honestly get in touch if you want to do a lesson where we can go through what i would go through and we can we can actually make a guitar to routine just for you just for you so that we can work on stuff that's important for you because so we can make you a really rounded guitar player it's really easy to do and i love all that sort of stuff m patty i've always thought right hand is the most important how do you find out what strumming to use when you want to play a song really good question i've actually just done a video on this one too so um i think last week's stream might have some stuff on this so what you want to do is um in your and i agree right hand like just play it just play one chord but if you've got a good right hand you can do a lot with that right hand so strumming out finding out what a strumming pattern to use is basically about five or six strumming patterns maybe seven if you want to really stretch it out but the, when i'm saying five or six there's only like most songs will fit into those five or six and there's always variations on them but generally it's going to come down to that what you want to be doing is finding out how many beats there are in a bar or in a, when you're listening to the song basically just count with it so it'll be like if the song's doing this that feel i was just doing you know i'll be like this one uh, uh, uh. i'm just like counting along like one two three four two three oh, okay so there's four beats but if it did this might be going one two three one two three one two three one two three oh, it's, that must be one two three four five six one two three four five six so it must be six eight that kind of thing so if you, that's how i would start get the, the feel right and then you can then it narrows it down to what strum it's going to be if it's four four you've got a bunch of them but if it's six eight it pretty much gives you one or two strumming patterns you could possibly do um and in two four it gives you pretty much should be pretty obvious when you hear it, it should be like one like one, two, one, two, one, two, that kind of thing. 
So you might still get that wrong, but that's going to help you out trying to figure that out. And then you're going to do downstrokes. So downstrokes. So that song that I did, like um, that groove there, I already know the groove, but if I was figuring it out, it'd be like um, just downstrokes, getting the pulse. And then, and then when I hear those da das, I know that that's going to be an upstroke. This is a very quick version of this, by the way. I can kind of figure out where that groove would be. Now I know that groove. So once you know the strums, so get all the strums down M Patty. So go along and get um, those nailed. So I would go to my channel basically and get every strum down that you can see there. And um, and there's only like a generally about five or six that you need to know. And then you can just overlay that onto the pattern. You'd be like, oh, it's just the slow rock strum. You know, like it's, it seems to go da 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 da. So you'd be and you'll know where the up, downs and ups are supposed to go. So that's a real condensed version, but it is easy to do with downstrokes. So figure out those downstrokes and boom, you can get that uh, strumming pattern down. You might just find it is just a down strum. Sebastian Heslip, I really like the idea of taking away the third string for soloing. Thanks. Oh, awesome. I think I may have learned a weird finger pattern for doing the scales that I'm doing to have a break. That I'm doing to have a break. So yeah, just different ways. So I would recommend from, and that's great. You're trying out the getting rid of the string, right? Because limitation uh, forces creativity by giving yourself limitations. Good bit of philosophy there for you. But with um, just make sure you don't get too wound up, Sebastian, with technical aspects of what your fingers are doing and going where. Because sometimes we work so hard to make our fingers become these incredible tools of because we think that's what makes good soloing, but really makes good soloing is the note choice and the rhythm against the chord and rhythm that you're listening to, okay? So um, a lot of times you'll find the best stuff, it's, it's not actually the most clever finger arrangement, you know, thing going on because we judge it really on the way we feel. And um, although you might be impressed when you see someone doing something amazing physically, M. Patty, thanks. Hope that helps, but get in touch if you need any lessons, guys. It's, it's a very, very easy thing to do, and we can help you. You can help you like more directly. But yeah, so you don't get too tangled up in having being too technical. I, I remember I was guilty of this, Sebastian. I was like, oh, I saw these. I was watching Ingvar Malmsteen and Eddie Van Halen and Steve Vai and Joe Satriani. When I say watching, listening, that you never watched them. You can see them. You all you saw is a, a, a picture in a guitar magazine in those days. But I'd hear all these kind of like. I can barely do that thing, but I'd just hear those and go, "How that? What is that?" And it's amazing, and try and figure out what it was. And so you'd, you'd, it's just I'd get so obsessed on the thing that I couldn't do that felt like it's basically the backflip or the jumping, spinning sidekick of guitar, which looks impressive on screen, but not actually effective in real life. It's great for uh, getting those people at my age are uh, getting too excited about it. So don't get too obsessed about that kind of stuff is what I'm trying to say, Sebastian. Um, is it Dotran? Do can you play, can you play a chord funky? Let's do it. Let's do it. Someone said play Wonderwall. So why don't I do, why don't I do a funky version of Wonderwall just to play us out? Because I think we're just about done. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I can sing a bit too. So let's do put a funky groove on. So I'm just doing that same groove. exactly what I would be playing on a looper. 
which, by the way, not I think it's ne not next week, the week after, I'm going to be doing some stuff with a looper and going over exactly that. Going to be chucking some songs down, playing some grooves. You know the chorus. And I said, maybe going to be the one that sees me. Tommy, right? So what's your guitar brand? This is a Cole Clark. I'll show you right up there. Can you see that? Cole Clark. This is an Australian brand. And so you might have heard of Maiton guitars coming from Australia. So it's made of a lot of the same kind of woods, but a slightly different design. And it's got microphones built into it. I've got two microphones inside here attached to the wood. That's how they come. And it's also got a piezo, I think, style bridge pickup in here. And I can dial in whatever version of this three basically three types of sound i can get that's why it sounds like a real guitar like if i turn my voice off for a second you'll hear it here's my voice off so all those noises you would have heard i just turned myself down there so you would have heard all that all that sort of stuff which you don't normally hear when you just get a piezo pickup because you can actually get there is actually a microphone in there so uh, anyway, guys, no, no, brilliant. Good day, Maestro. Hey, thank you so much, guys. So next, there'll be another video arriving hopefully soon. Uh, there's an you know, properly edited video. I've got a bunch of stuff now that's actually recorded getting edited, and I can't wait to show you guys it all. Get in touch if you want a guitar lesson, martintheguitarguy.net if you want to go to my website and book. Otherwise, go through Facebook, which is at martintheguitarguy. Same with Instagram. Patreon, that's another thing. If you want to think about help supporting me on Patreon, getting access to all that extra stuff, getting part of the small community we've got growing there, and um, extra videos, all that sort of stuff. You'll get the videos before everyone else does, et cetera, et cetera, amazing stuff. Like and subscribe, all you dudes out there that are not liked and subscribed, um, push those thumbs up. It helps the algorithm. We want to make this channel uh, actually help some guitar players out there. So we want more people to be really, really kicking butt on guitar. And I've had a fun day, already fun morning. I think I deserve another coffee. You guys go and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll catch you guys later. Play some guitar, eh? Might get right into it now.